Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah, so today I will bring you another aspect, which is maybe not super seenable in like now in the blockchain world and also in NFT world. And um, yeah, so like my actual initiative is like Sustain All, and uh, we are our, a collaboration lab on sustainable development goals. But we are doing also like a different kind of projects. Like I founded also like a Flint Arts Collective, Raya Collective. So today I will bring you some examples from two different initiatives. One from like artistic perspective about NFTs, and one uh, is more related to like energy and blockchain principles. So how can we bring sustainability in blockchain? So maybe this also helps in the hackathon, that, uh, because I saw the track called like sustainability, so this is super nice, actually. Um, yeah, so how do I go with slides? I think here. Exactly, so I will introduce you first, like sustain all, like my team and what we are doing at uh, the university at TU Berlin, Technical University Berlin. And um, what is our motivation? What is our aim? What is our motto? And then um, I will go through like sustainable development goals. Maybe you heard of them, maybe you didn't. And um, then, um, yeah, I will bring like blockchain. I will try to uh, merge the sustainable growth with blockchain and what is actually the official initiatives, like United Nations, what are they telling about that? So, and um, I will talk about then our artist collective, which is um, doing the artworks for sustainability. Uh, it's uh, Rhea, and then I will show some artists from the collective and their artworks, and how we match the artworks with the SDGs. Okay, so this is my core team, and um, basically, uh, yeah, I'm the founder of Sustain All and Rare Collective and the Sustain Lab at the TU Berlin. And um, um, yeah, as you see, I'm an environmental engineer, and I developed in my master thesis a concept how to make the buildings, like the public buildings, like climate neutral. Uh, with binding uh, sustainability and uh, new renovation plans, renewable energies, motivating the user in the buildings, how to reduce the energy, how to like how we can educate the people actually to reduce the energy consumption, and um, yeah, I was bringing all these aspects uh, aspects together and also monitoring the data for one year in one school building in Berlin. And uh, yeah, we also reached, actually, this is like another project, <laughs> but we also reached like a super nice energy consumption in three months, like 12% of um, uh, consumption of electricity. And um, yeah, but today I will talk about uh, <laughs> different uh, projects. And um, yeah, basically my uh, other team member is uh, Gregor and he's the communication lead and he's also a designer and um, maybe if you were in NFT Berlin conference, maybe you saw him also, he was in the core team. And um, basically and um, the thing is we are looking for a third or four team members. Uh, because it's super exciting, this is super growing right now, and uh, our developer just uh, left. <laughs> so we need a tech developer and business developer if you're looking for something to work with us. Um, so our mission is to accelerate the transmission to more sustainable worlds with engaging everyone to our vision. So basically, we are <laughs> destroying the planet. So, and we are running out of resources to sustain life as we know it. And we need to do something about this, but what? So, um, basically, maybe, so now this is like my research, I'm also checking if NFTs and if blockchain can help save the, our environment and maybe give long-term like sustainability, financial sustainability. 
and because maybe we are creating some tokens and maybe this can be also like for the land titles and for the carbon credits, maybe this can be a solution. So, but we will see. And so, what is the problem? The problem is basically there is a lack of sustainable blockchain based platform which brings people to collaborate and also like on innovation, innovation and sustainable topics. And um, one of like most of the Flint artists, there are like so many artists and they are not visible and also scientists in the universities, they are doing lots of research projects, but they are also not visible and there are not enough funds. So maybe blockchain can be like the solution to bring funds to the sustainable projects. So I will show our concept later. And um, there is lack of sustainability awareness in the blockchain. <laughs> so I'm laughing, but uh, yes, you know why. Um, so what is our solution? So we are basically now building like a collaborative platform and lab based on global shared knowledge and skills met with the projects and people, they expose themselves and they find partners and funds. But how it works? So basically you are maybe a project maker and you have an idea. So for example, you're a farmer and you want to build a solar panel in your land. And, but you are missing a workforce because you can't do this alone, right? And maybe you need also an education, how to build your solar panel, do it yourself, at your land. And uh, then you come to us basically to the platform and you make a call. And then we bring you actually like students or like different project partners, which you can collaborate. And then at the end, you see here the sustainable development goals a project partner is happy, and then the sustainable development goals are also a bit reached. So, but it's important to measure and track this. So, what is our impact actually, like in every project? So, and now I'm coming like to the lab part. So, what is actually this collaboration lab on SDGs? And I will come later to the SDGs, but I'm showing first the concept. So basically, we are in the lab at the TU Berlin. We are focusing on every SDG, and um, they are like we are trying to find projects, project partners, which we can support every SDG, and we bring these project partners to the students. So basically, every semester this is a module, and every semester it runs, and. Um, it's like more and uh, there are like different workshops we are giving, like project management workshops, expert talks, excursions, resource discussions. Like we are bringing like for 17 SDGs, 17 experts and uh, basically building bridges between non-university partners, experts and students. And um, yeah, so this was basically the idea when I was a student. I was thinking, okay, <laughs> there are like so many like technical stuff. It's a technical university and I'm learning lots of nice things, but I want to implement and I want to see like, okay, what's the implementation causing what? And um, yeah, so this is basically our stakeholders, students, project makers and investors. So basically students, they're like starting with actually learning and they're involving their like directly with the projects to their career. And project makers, they basically project exposure, like their projects exp exp uh, exposure, and also they collaborate, they find funds and they share knowledge. And in the important factor is investor, of course. So in this part is actually coming, we are to the blockchain and and um, they basically, they can invest, they can return with money, they can have green impact, they can compensate their CO2 emissions. So they're like big companies now, they are trying to do, trying to merge sustainability to, to their companies and it's super hard for them. And um, yeah, basically this is like what we are building right now, a platform where you can see in a map with different 
projects that you can just collaborate, invest, or like you can see the project partners. And um, yeah, our motto is like think global, act local, collaborate, that's sustain all. <laughs> um, yeah, but now I'm coming to the lab team. So basically you see like what we are doing in the lab, like now I'm going to go to the concept. So how are we actually merging the sustainability in education? So how universities can actually go more innovative, more like education, like in sustainability and also implement these projects. So basically the, our supervisor is like Andrea Cominola and he's from the Einstein Center for Digital Future and also chair, uh, head of chair of Smart Water Networks at TU Berlin. And um, I'm not going to tell myself again. And uh, Sheval and Egeberg, they're my uh, tutors and they're also helping with the content in the class. So basically Sustain Lab, so what we are talking is consists of three different labs, educational lab, project lab, and integration and awareness lab. So in the education lab, we are basically trying to foster the education on SDGs and with guest lecturers on 17 SDGs and journal clubs. And in the project lab, what we are doing is we are implementing with different partners, non-university partners, these projects and also giving workshops, taking workshops from different initiatives in our lab. And also in the integration events lab, it's not just saying what we are doing in the lab at the university, but we are trying to also make this community events, like bringing actually what is sustainability, what is like the SDGs, we are trying to bring it out. So we are organizing like climate days, we are organizing sustainability markets. So there are like different community events. And now I'm trying to find the emergency, the emergency in the blockchain. And uh, yeah, we had like different guest speakers on education, ICT, the critic, critics and sustainability, um, like different digitalizations and uh, like water SDGs. So we match with every speaker with SDGs. And um, <clears throat> like there are like different project partners are helping with the students like that. We bring these partners that they do projects with the students and at the end, these research projects, they also gain like different knowledge. The partners are also learning from students and also like students are learning from partners. So this is like actually like peer to peer. And yeah, here we have a little technical problem, but it's okay. I guess like here something uh, happened. Um, yeah, so basically the idea is we have this pool Right, so we have like we have like different project partners, and uh, students every semester they are like getting these challenges. So there are like different challenges. Like for example, like Bainter is bringing like a mobility challenge. So the students are trying to solve like group of students trying to solve this challenge. Germany Resource Center brings like a flood risk management challenge, for example, and then they are like trying to solve this challenge, and. Um, and then we are collecting, collecting, collecting all these projects and then we are measuring the impact on the sustainability. So, but now I'm going front. So now you see the concept, how it works, how we are doing it. And now I will actually like go to the basic terms. What is sustainable development? So I was like saying, okay, we are bringing these guest speakers on 17 different SDGs and uh, basically, but what is also SDG in the beginning? So because it's so many people, they actually didn't know, like they don't know when I'm talking about, hey, like um, SDG, like most of the like people, they don't know it yet. So um, when I go to the beginning, to the basics, so sustainable development is a development which meets the needs of current generations without compromising the ability of future generations meet their own needs. So basically, we need to save our resources. So if we just don't like reduce, reuse, recycle, and we have this planet, and we have these boundaries, and we can't go outside of the boundaries because this is 
this is the boundaries. We can go. And that's why we need to find solutions, how we can stay in the boundaries, right? And um, yeah, basically, this is a term from United Nations, our common future. So this is our common future. So like this is this we need to do something like we need to get together, we need to collaborate and we need to find a community that we can sustain ourselves. And um, yeah, this is a basic thing that we need to create this united community with increasing environmental awareness, with shared sustainable goals, identifying problems worldwide, and suggesting implementation of these SDGs. Okay. And going to the other basic, what are the sustainable development goals? So they're like, this is the 2030 agenda. So 2030, because we need to reach these goals until 2030. So, and how much time do we have? So it's like 2022, so we have eight years. Okay, cool. But uh, most of the population doesn't know this term. So this is the thing. Now, these 17 goals, there are 17 different goals on the SDGs. And they have different action areas. So the first area is like putting the human dignity at the center. And then the protecting the planet, promote the prosperity for all, promote the peace and build global, oops, <laughs> and build global partnerships. So we need to come together. We need to think, we need to rethink about our generation and we need to reach these goals in eight years. Okay. So, but uh, there are also critics about this. So this is not something like, okay, this is super good. We are going to do this, but there are critics on this because how are we going to do it as like citizens? This is the most important question. So we need to educate ourselves and we need to also see, okay, if this is like really implementable. So these goals actually, they have three different dimensions, environmental, economical, and also social. So I will show you the goals in detail. So the first one is like no poverty. Basically, um, yeah, these all goals, like, like they have super, like for the different countries, they are like, they have different meanings because this is not the same for every country and all these goals, they have like different indicators. So I, will, I won't go like through all of these goals, but just like to hear, if you didn't hear about it before. So for example, like climate action, I think you heard of it, right? So basically, yeah, we have one planet, we need to save the climate, we need to reduce the CO2, uh, CO2 emissions. For example, like this quality education, like, uh, the educating is, for example, maybe here in Europe is something normal, but still there are like some places they don't have this right. And for example, like reduce inequalities, like we see even like now, like women in business, for example, like there are like different kind of indicators, which for each goal, like this, they are making these pillars, like social, economic and environmental and we are trying to measure the impact with the projects that we are doing, okay? Which SDG, like, we are having the impact on. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so this is like the SDG indicator. So what is an SDG indicator? They are basically the indicators, there are like different indicators in each, like, goal. And these indicators helps to target, to check, to measure the goal. So, for example, like the, for the indicator like climate change, climate action, we have an indicator as like CO2 emissions. So this is like the, our track measurement. So this is for the info. But so how are we going to implement this SDG? So this is the thing. So first we need to understand. 
So you are seeing it right now, we are understanding about it. We are trying to reflect about it. Okay, which SDG, what I'm doing in my life, maybe which I can have an impact on. And then we are defining the priorities and then we are seeing it. Okay, this SDG is important. Maybe, for example, your uh, company or like, your, like um, what you are doing it right now. And then you are setting the goals. And then after you set the goals, then you start to integrate. And we see now, we will see, okay, how we can integrate these SDGs to the blockchain. Uh, what's happened? <laughs> uh, I think I clicked on something else. Should I click again? I see it here, but I, ah, yeah. Okay, um, sorry for that. So like blockchain and sustainability. Um, so basically on this thing, like on like United Nations, they already like published about, okay, maybe blockchain technology will help. And maybe they will be like an instrumental in funding these goals and like for example, like NFTs and also like blockchain technology, they can be a funding source for the projects, for the sustainable projects. And, um, and then what we thought about, okay, but we are minting something, for example, for the NFTs, when you mint, like I will show also like the numbers, like for example, on Ethereum, like it's, it's super, uh, super sadly, <laughs> it's, uh, it's too much. Um, so then we said, okay, maybe we can compensate these emissions with through the projects that we are doing. So we get the money and we compensate. <laughs> so it's like win-win. Um, so, but like actually like the NFTs are also like damaging the environment because it's proved that they have a higher consumption than several countries. Okay. Mm. So what are we going to do? <laughs> um, so first of all, why blockchain? So because like now I'm merging with the sustainability. So now I'm not starting like blockchain like 101. Uh, 101. Um, but it's really like uh, if you're thinking of energy and climate change, so SDG 7, clean energy and affordable energy. So if you're thinking of it, so it's actually blockchain can automa automate the electricity consuming systems. For example, they can like automate the smart meters, which for example, it shows like for example in the building, when there is no need to put the light on, they can actually with the smart contracts, they can actually automate the systems. And this is actually, this is for the sustainable community, this is super good because this is decentralized. So basically, if we have our decentralized energy in our own houses, our PV systems, wind systems, so we don't need actually the central authorities like to get the electricity and we don't need to pay them, right? And this is transparent, like it's, I mean, it's not like, okay, I give you this, you gave me this, this later, like a banking currency, like it's something transparent. So like basically we see in the traditional database, centralized trust environments. Okay, we have the database, we have the central authority, and then we are the participants as citizens, and we can have the access through this authority. But, if we have like a decentralized blockchain environment, and it's actually like we are the participants, maybe more happier, because we can automatize, like optimize like our own energy resources. And um, yeah, so this is like the, the, the thing which you can merge with the sustainability and blockchain. And so like here comes like more explanations. So, this is actually like the key priority, as we said, 
decentralization is super important for the energy savings and also like to be to maintain our sustainable living and sustainable communities. And so for the transparency, so every peer knows the data. So you can see actually in your smartphone, you can see like how much like energy you're like consuming, how much like not just from the bills, but you have your own data and you can just uh, play with it. You can just automize it. And then it's also like, uh, um, it's, since there is a transparency, any peer can also verify the correctness of the state of distributed ledger. And it's also, any peer can verify the integrity of the distributed ledger. So, but what is like the application actually to energy and climate solutions. So energy market decentralization lies in harnessing in the combination of blockchain technologies with artificial intelligence, the internet of things, like smart meters I was talking about, and also like affordable renewable energy production, for example, solar panels on your rooftop and um, storage equipment like batteries. So you can store it actually your own energy. You can create your own energy, you can store it, you can use it, like you can make your hot water and like this will be your own resource. So you can sustain your actually house, right? Um, so actually how is this like, this technology like closing the loop and maybe in climate financing and accounting? So you're seeing here like, we have like the financial capitals and they are basically bringing like optimizing the process like to climate action and we have the value it's, it's positive positive and we have the account so it's like a loop and it's closed so this means like uh, it's also like a life cycle thinking it's closing the loop means something good, right? So like for the sustainability. And um, so you see, for example, you, you just imagine that you are this guy or yeah. <laughs> and you're sitting here and you have your own project and just imagine that you can basically decentralize your decentralized project, you can do it and you have an impact on the climate value directly with your project operation through aggregation business models of blockchain. So basically what is like the, the emissions? So like let's come to the point. The emissions was the carbon footprint of like one NFT. Because I was talking about, okay, blockchain is like good, like NFTs are good, maybe we can sustain our lives, maybe we can just like fund our like sustainable projects. And um, so there are like two different kinds of like stake of proof, stake, stake of work. I think you already heard about it. Um, stake of proof is like carbon neutral mean thing. But stake of work... Ooh, so like here is that comes the point that we need to actually like think, okay, how are we gonna, if you're doing this job, how are we gonna <laughs> make it sustainable, right? So we need to think about it. It's not like, hey, yeah, I have Bitcoins, like on Ethereum. So this is not super like, I mean, you know, we need to think about like, if you're mean thing like this NFTs, we need to think about, okay, this is like my carbon footprint actually as a, human being, like um, this number, you see, like 33.4 kilograms CO2, oh, I'm doing this all the time, um, 4 kilograms CO2 is like one of the, like the, the produce, the production of like one Ethereum when you are minting it in the Ethereum blockchain and um, one person in one year produces also 11.3 ton carbon uh, CO2 per person. So if you compare like in your mind, like how is the difference? <laughs> it's actually a lot. 
<laughs> so we need to find solutions how if you are doing this business, if you are in blockchain, if you are in the NFT world, we need to find solutions how to bring sustainability inside and how we are going to make it carbon neutral and how we are going to compensate like the emissions. And so, and at that point, I said, okay, this is like super good, what we are doing at the university. Like we have our like project uh, lab, we are inviting guest speakers, and uh, we are working directly with students, project partners. But how I can bring to the blockchain, to the NFT world, actually like sustainability with doing something different. At that moment, like it was actually super new. It was four months ago. Um, I was talking with an, like a friend of mine an artist and is actually then at that point we started this Raya. So like Raya is a collective, like this Philint artist collective and um, which we are aiming like that we make a difference in the blockchain, like in the NFT world with our art on sustainability. So our aim is basically exploring like the blockchain and NFTs and contributing the fulfillment of like the United Nations SDGs with our arts works and also in the community of like women, intersex, trans folk and non-binary people. And the motto is, okay, the 17 SDGs are at the heart of ag agenda like 2030 and we need to find like, we need to find the merge like with the blockchain technology and with the NFTs. So, and then we made a concept. Oh, I have a big tree. Um, so we made a concept. We said, okay, let's organize an open call and let's check the artists like that. Maybe they will do something for like sustainable, like an artworks, like and matching with their sustainability. And then with this artworks, maybe we can mint NFTs and then we can make uh, we can fund our sustainable projects in the sustainable lab. So then we make like a financial concept. We said, okay, arts gets percentages, NGO gets percentages that the artists choose, sustainable gets percentages, NFT company gets percentages, project team gets percentages. But the main point is that we are, like with this NFT fundings, we are giving like the most of the resources to the NGOs and like the sustainable projects and we can skip this and then like in the first open call we already covered so much SDGs this was like unbelievable like uh, one two three four four five six seven eight I don't know eight <laughs> so um, we were like covering actually lots of the SDGs and we were like trying to see okay it's actually doable so I will go now like to the open gallery so um, so you can like just see like how are, how are, how did we do it actually? So like the first artist is like uh, Hatije, and like she basically do, did this like three D art and uh, m matching with like the gender equality SDG. The other one was like this life on land and life below water SDGs, matching this three D artworks. And then the other one was like Jemre, and like she was doing like the new world era. It's like it's also kind of like matching with the climate change and sustainable communities, because this was like this um, basically pointing like the carbon footprints, like this artwork. And the other one was like Caroline, and she was doing this like Gaia images, like with the AI, and um, she was basically also matching like with the seven the SDG 7, Sustainable Communities. And the other one was like Petia, and she was uh, basically, she did this like woman, um, like this emotional, materialized like woman, like with this um, like um, healing with like wound healing bioplastic. So this is basically also going into the direction of like gender and also like this plastic usage. And um, 
Yeah, and she did actually like a tattoo, but I think like th this tattoo was here, but uh, something happened. <laughs> so, um, but if you want, I can show it later. And Sedef was this, oh. And Bruno was like doing basically like the feminine, like cool, like this bringing like the feminism like up and bringing like women in this world, like because I think NFT world is like lots of men. And um, yeah, and then we had also another 3D artist. She did a video, but I think it's, yeah, I think the videos are gone somehow or Yeah. Anyway, so the Mikol was also like working on the aesthetics of uh, like the nature. So you see like life is a flower. Life is a flower, but we need to give this flower like water, right? And um, Shirin was also doing like different burning pixels of like uh, this climate action and digital like uh, fashion and uh, like for the sustainable communities. Uh, she did also some different videos. And this is actually a moving image, but it's not moving here right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can, sh like, I can send you this. I, these artworks are also in the website, actually. And uh, Mimi was also like, a, this, was, this is like an artwork from her, and this was, she was doing this coffee capsules, circular thinking, like seeing basically, you see this, all the coffee capsules around her, and maybe like thinking of like this, each capsule is basically, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going fast. So, but this is the last artist, Stacy, and she is also empowering like the female identity. And you can see all this like artworks, this will be also in the platform, and will be also um, sold soon. So, um, yeah, actually I'm coming to end. Um, you see like our concept, like two different like initiatives, like Sustain All, Rare Collective, the collaboration lab at the, uh, at the TU Berlin. So basically this all needs like, uh, of course, maybe like this is the community, maybe I can ask for if you are like interested, you can uh, just like come to me, talk to me, write to me like on LinkedIn everywhere. <laughs> um, so basically we need this, this, um, all like because this is like a bringing together, collaborating for a sustainable future. So we need, of course, investors. We need like more artists like in our collective. But we are we were already like 30 right now, and but of course like why not more, and more students like who would like to join the class. And it's every semester is 30 students in the lab, and um, yeah, and developers of course. <laughs> um, so there are like some resources, you can find it. And um, yeah, basically this is like the official ones, e like EU, GIZ and like United Nations. And you can reach us <laughs> um, from our website. You can just uh, scan like the QR codes, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, if you're a student, you can go to the portal and yeah, basically, I'm super on time. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much. And um, yeah, this was it. <laughs> okay, I think we have a bit of time for some questions. If anyone has any questions yeah. in the audience. I forget a, about the question. There's a roving microphone. Okay. Uh, then I guess we will take it from here. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>